Good morning, everybody. My name is Ian Aberly. Thank you for joining us today for LinkedIn Learning for Managers, presented by, presented by the Office of Information Technology and part of our spring series of trainings. Uh, today, Zach Peterson is going to be walking us through taking advantage of all the great things that LinkedIn Learning has to offer and help you basically engage more with your employees and um, really just kind of, uh, well, take value, uh, take advantage of one of the great resources that we have as part of our IT training team. Now, if uh, just to get a little started, this meeting is being recorded and we will uh, be answering questions in the chat. So feel free to uh, ask any questions there. I will be trying to answer those as best I can. If not, I will hand them off to Zach. Um, and at this point, why don't, uh, if you have any other questions, just feel free to put them in there. Um, Zach, are you ready? I think so, Ian. Thanks a lot. And uh, thanks, everybody, right. for joining us. Um, again, my name is Zach Peterson. I'm with the Training and Communications team, along with my colleague, Ian Aberly. And thanks to him for uh, manning the chat room and making sure all of our questions get answered today. And uh, like we said, we are going to go over some of the features for LinkedIn Learning. Now, you may already be aware of LinkedIn Learning and have possibly used it for your own professional development, but you can also use it to encourage your employees as a manager to continue their development as well. And there is a new role or a fairly new role that is available to you that you can request that I'll go over with you. And that is called the curator role. So right now, what I'm going to do for today, I know we're scheduled for an hour, but I do not expect to take this whole hour. So I'll give a little bit of your time back today. And that's a testament really to just how simple and easy LinkedIn learning makes it to uh, manage uh, learning management for your employees and as well as yourself. So before we get started and dive into LinkedIn learning, I will show you some advantages, some statistics that LinkedIn has put together about using LinkedIn learning, not only for your team, but also for yourself. And then I'll dive a little bit deeper into the curator role itself, and I'll show you a little bit of how to create learning paths, which is the way LinkedIn Learning calls basically a playlist that can be completed in a specific order by yourself or by your team. And uh, also we will go over how to share that content once uh, you have created that learning path, or if you're just wanting to share an existing course in LinkedIn Learning with your team. So that's what we're gonna go over. And right quick, I just wanna go over a few things that LinkedIn Learning has put together on how much managers drive the learning experience of your team. Now, uh, of course, employee retention is incredibly important. And 94% uh, of employees usually will stay at a company longer if they are given the opportunity to develop themselves professionally. And LinkedIn Learning is a great way to do that since it's always on demand and they can go back to it at any time, stop and start whenever they need to, because of course, work and life does happen, right? Uh, also, uh, if a manager tells someone to take a particular course in LinkedIn Learning or recommends a course, 75% uh, of employees would take that course as they prescribe. So it is important for you to take part in their journey as well for professional development. And also 46% uh, of learners find out about those opportunities from their manager or other leadership in their area. So again, it's very critical for you to take part in that process and in that journey. And LinkedIn Learning can make that a whole lot easier for you. And so a few other advantages of basically, of course, we always want to know what's in it for me. Um, of course, career development's important, not just for your employees, but for you as well. And LinkedIn Learning has opportunities for everyone. So for management courses, for basic courses on how to use Microsoft Teams that I know we're switching to here in the next several months from the Skype for Business platform. Um, how do I improve my public speaking skills, things like that. It's always important to give your employees tools for success, and it is very easy to do using LinkedIn Learning. Another good way to utilize LinkedIn Learning as a manager is in employee performance reviews. I know I always have goals, and sometimes they can be hard to not only come up with, but to complete because you need to have 
an actionable plan, right? Well, LinkedIn Learning kind of provides all of that for you. Um, so you can say, hey, for your goal, why don't you try this particular course in LinkedIn Learning? And once you're done, you get either a certificate of completion or in some cases for some of the courses in LinkedIn Learning, you get a certification, which uh, of course, that is a actionable and measurable goal. So LinkedIn Learning is a great resource for that. And again, going back to coaching and mentoring your team, it's always important to continue that attitude and environment of con consistent, continuous learning and upskilling and cross-training. That's one thing I know what I'm doing right now is I'm using LinkedIn Learning to learn more about InDesign. So uh, in case Ian needs a hand, because he's our InDesign expert in our area for some things, um, I can always help out if we're uh, shorthanded or something like that. I need to be able to cross-train to help my teammates out. So that's an uh, important thing as well. So all of these are great advantages to using LinkedIn Learning for your professional development as well as your teammates. And speaking of your own professional development, we do have, uh, these are just a very, very brief or a uh, tiny sampling of management and leadership courses that are available to you in LinkedIn Learning. Um, uh, and I will send this slide deck to folks that have attended today because these are links directly to those courses. So, of course, transitioning from manager to leader, uh, coaching for results, developing emotional intelligence, inclusive leadership, change management foundations, which can be very important. These were top courses managers watched in 2019. Of course, things have changed a little bit. Um, of course, now what I'm seeing uh, in the trends uh, for our LinkedIn learning area is a lot of AI courses are being watched, a lot of Excel uh, courses, data science courses are being watched, and a lot of, well, maybe more of a couple of years ago, um, flexible work schedules, how to manage that. Uh, if you're working remote some days and then on campus some other days, um, those courses were watched quite a bit earlier, of course, for uh, the pandemic and things like that. So uh, things have evolved since these statistics were uh, gathered by LinkedIn Learning, but uh, there are hundreds of different courses. Actually, in total, there's over 9,000 different courses that are available to you and your team in LinkedIn Learning. So excellent resource, all active students, faculty, and staff. If you have a student that's going to school here, let them know about this. <laughs> let them know about this incredible resource that's available for them for free as long as they're a student, faculty, or staff member here at SMU. So next, before I dive into the curator role, I just want to give you a little bit of background on it. It is an ability, it does grant you the ability to not only create learning paths, which I'll go over here in a bit, but also share those paths and content with your team or anyone else you'd like for that matter. Um, for requesting the curator role, just contact the IT help desk and let them know that you would like the curator role to be applied to your LinkedIn Learning account. If you haven't used LinkedIn Learning before, it's super easy to get started. You go to smu.edu slash LinkedIn, and there will be a sign in button there, and you will then be directed to log in with your SMU credentials, and then it will create your account. It will also prompt you to link your actual personal LinkedIn learning profile, which you don't have to do that, but it is recommended because based on your LinkedIn profile, it can give you some really good recommendations on things to take in LinkedIn learning. So, uh, but to get that started, go ahead and contact the IT help desk and we will get you started. So by default, the curator role allows you to just create and share those learning paths or share other content with your team. There is also an option if you have any specific uh, training videos or other content that you would like to include in LinkedIn Learning that your team can watch, or if it's helpful to anyone else at SMU, you can actually have it linked in LinkedIn Learning so people can search for it in uh, LinkedIn Learning. So if your area has a video that could be informative for other folks here using LinkedIn Learning, we can also add the ability for you to add that content, but that is an additional feature. So if you are interested in that, either let me know at ittraining at smu.edu for more details or ask for the create content option in, um, in your request and we can make sure that that's assigned to you. So before I move on to the actual demo of LinkedIn Learning's uh, learning path creation tool, uh, Ian, do we have any questions or anything like that? 
No, we don't see any questions right now, but I, I did. Uh, somebody did alert me that there was an error uh, issue with the chat. Um, oh. and so that has now been fixed. So the, the people, everybody should be able to now chat within the uh, in the chat box. But there is also the Q&A section, too. So it, okay. both of those should be open and available for everybody as, as we go forward. Uh, but, yeah, if you uh, have a question or something that Zach mentioned that you might want to um, – hit back on or highlight uh please feel free to add that in and we will we will get that and i will um try not to interrupt zach too much but if there's something <laughs> definitely we need <laughs> we need to expand upon uh please let us know and and right. we will be happy to it but uh all right. no no problem away, with interrupting man. me all right <laughs> thanks ian so much uh let me go ahead and i'll switch sure. over here to my browser and of course, this is all going to be in your browser. Um, as always, sbu.edu slash LinkedIn Learning is going to be your one-stop shop for a lot of information regarding LinkedIn Learning. And this is, of course, also where you will go ahead and click and sign in, especially if you haven't before. But uh, once you log in, you'll be brought to something similar to this, the LinkedIn Learning homepage. Once you get the curator role up in the top uh, right-hand corner by the SMU logo, right now mine, because I have an administrator account. Mine has a go to admin button, but yours will have an add button. And when you click on that add button, it will give you the options to create a new learning path or uh, share uh, content with others. And if you do have access to actually create or add videos themselves to LinkedIn Learning, it will have a uh, upload content option if you have that enabled. So, but for me, it's a little bit different. So I'm going to go into my administrator role and kind of go over what the creation process will still look like for you. So for me, my add button is right here or right up here in the top right, but it will show up for you on that other page for add. So right now I do have my library and it will also have in your add button, it will have an option for you to view your library, which will include all of your learning paths that you've created and videos that you've uploaded. And I do have some content for, as a really good example, I have some of our other IT training information and videos here in uh, LinkedIn Learning, as well as our other sources, be it Panopto or YouTube. Both of those links will work in uh, LinkedIn Learning when you're uh, uploading content. Also, another uh, thing is uh, the library has a curator role, and they have added some of their research videos, which is actually pretty cool. So if you do have anything useful and you would like to have that available to folks in LinkedIn Learning, um, ask for that upload content feature or just let me know at ittraining at smu.edu and I'd be happy to, happy to uh, consult with you and help you out on making that available. Uh, so now let's say that I do have my curator role and I would like to create a brand new learning path. So I'm going to click on that add button and then I'm going to click on create learning path. Now, there is also an ability to create collections for some reason. They are not letting curators do that. I have uh, let our representatives at LinkedIn Learning know that I would love for that to be available to you as a curator um, because collections, uh, they are different from learning paths and that learning paths have to be uh, completed in a particular order. Collections are just basically a playlist, like a YouTube playlist. Um, but learning paths are the default of what you can create. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now, you can copy an existing one that's already in the system if you have one, or you can create a new one from scratch, which that's what I'm going to do. And now I'm just going to go ahead and name my uh, new learning path, which I think I will just name it public speaking. And you can add a description. And then here's the discoverability. So who can find this? If you want to make it available to everyone at SMU, you can. Uh, selected groups, you can. We don't use groups super often, but uh, some of them are available. Or if you're really wanting to just share this with your team, you can just say it's private and they would need the link to it. You can also, once you create it, uh, share it with specific individuals if you wanted to. Now you add skills. So you can add, uh, for example, it searches through uh, what you've put for a title and description. So for suggested skills, it already says public speaking. So I'll add that. I'll add job skills. And then you can always search for additional skills as well. 
like for example, conference speaking or persuasive speaking, things like that. So you can add whatever skills you want to make it a little easier to look for. And then also you will have the uh, content language, uh, which of course by usually by default is going to be uh, English, but also you can uh, show that you have created it or just generic as SMU. And then you can add some tags optionally if you wanted to. But once you do that, you'll click create. And you are now brought to the creation page for a new learning path. And you can uh, separate these into sections and you can then uh, break these up, break it, break a particular uh, learning path up into pieces. So let's say you're onboarding a new employee and this is your new employee onboarding learning path. You can have a section for Office 365 or Microsoft Teams or Microsoft 365, or um, you could have a video for, or you could have a section for my SMU because we have a little bit of my SMU content. Um, we, or you can have a section for uh, public speaking if that's what they're going to be doing as part of their job or any other things that will allow folks to uh, see different, see all of your content in different sections that are specific to what that entails. So that is a helpful tool there. But right now, I'm going to go ahead and use the section I have here. I can create a title, whatever you want that to be. Okay. And then the important part is adding your content. So you can link to content. So if you do have a YouTube video, a video on Panopto or something like that that you would like to link or just another web page, um, some documentation on the wiki possibly or uh, on your department's website, whatever it may be, you can link to that content from here and it will show it here in the uh uh, learning path. But right now, I want to add content from LinkedIn Learning. So I'm going to go ahead and search for some content, and it will bring up the search for the entirety of LinkedIn Learning. So I'm going to go ahead and go to public speaking. And now you have all of these courses. And now not only do you have the option to add entire courses to a learning path, but if you don't want them to take the entire length of a course, you can just add uh, individual videos from that uh, learning path or from that course into your learning path. So you can cherry pick particular specific items from entire courses that you can add to your learning path so you get just what you want them to see. So right now I'm going to add this entire course though. But over here, this overcoming your fear, I'm going to go ahead and add just a specific video from that. Let's see, practicing correctly, I think that would help. Let me go ahead and click add there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and go to another topic, just speaking in general. And then I can see a few other options here. Impromptu speaking, that might be a good one. 22 minutes, that's pretty short. So I'm going to go ahead and click on add for that. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to done. And now I have, in order from when I selected them, all of the courses or just single videos that I have selected. You can change the order of them using these move up or move down buttons. But if you wanted to do that, you can. And then once you do that, you can then add another section or you can just save this as it is. <coughs> so what you have now, what I'll go ahead and click save and publish. And now once you've published it, what we will do is ask if you want to share this with uh, any learners or groups. So uh, for this, I would, I would specify the specific people you would like to share with. So I'll just do Lorene Clausen, my boss there. <laughs> and other ways you can share it are to copy a link. So if you just want to send it an email or in Teams, you can. If you are using Microsoft Teams with your team, you can share it in a Teams channel. So then everybody in that team will be able to click on it, and then they will be able to view that learning path. And once you share it, uh, especially if you share it with specific people, it should then afterwards in your library be able to show you um, who has uh, actually looked at that particular um, particular learning path and how far they've gotten. So let me recommend that. And once I recommended that, it will send them an email 
uh, saying that there is a learning path that you've recommended to them. And then they can go ahead and click on it, log in, and then they'll be able to view it. And so then I will go back to the library. And for me, it shows it uh, here in my library. Uh, but for you, it will show just for your content since uh, it will just show uh, your content as a curator. So with that, that is the curator role. Uh, in a nutshell, just real quick, I'll show you the upload content option. Um, if you uh, do request to have this uh, permission, if you do have a specific video you would like to have available in LinkedIn Learning, either just for your team privately, if you have it privately listed, or if it's uh, useful to everyone at SMU, you could have it available that way. Uh, you can either upload a file or you can link to content, be it a YouTube video, Panopto video, I believe Vimeo works as well. Um, lots of different uh, URLs will work and are compatible with uploading this content. Uh, and it also works with documents. So if you just have a document you want them to view, uh, that is another way to do it. So that's just one other way. Once you upload that content, you can then add it to existing learning paths or go to other learning pet or create a brand new one and include that content as well. So like I said, this is a pretty straightforward uh, system once you get the permissions for the curator role. Um, and again, uh, let the help desk know if you want that role and then they will uh, send it our way and we can get you all set up. And whenever we do that, we will also send you a quick video that is a bit of a refresher of what we've gone over on how the curator role works. And I'll also, of course, have this recorded for you so we can then uh, use uh, or that you can then refer back to it. And of, as always, you can always ask us if you need any help. So with that in mind, uh, Ian, do we have any uh, questions to answer? Thanks, Zach. That's some great information there. Yeah, we do have a couple questions here. Um, and again, just to remind people, please feel free to put in any of your questions into the Q&A section or the chat. We'd be happy to get those out. But uh, to start off with, you showed uh, some great things there about how to limit the availability of your learning path to specific people. Um, but if you did and make it to... Uh, let's see, make it to, um, if you choose all of SMU, will you still be able to see who reviewed it? That's a very so good question. So I guess that it goes to the part where you were, yeah, you were showing the, uh, seeing if Lorene could see it um, when you added her, but. Um, right, yeah, so for the entire uh, university, I don't know if the curators can actually go that deep um, for that. So, uh, but they will be able to see, uh, probably not specifically who viewed it, but the uh, number of people who have viewed it. So you do get a basic uh, metric that way. Um, I will see, let me go ahead and take a look here to my all content because I do. Yeah. Well, and of course for managers, they will probably be creating these and making these available specifically for the members on their team. So that shouldn't be Correct. much of an issue, I would think, since they will already see um, those, the, those uh, few ways for um, and accessing that. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, and normally, uh, I would normally see a amount of viewers here in this uh, column, but for some reason, it is not showing. Let me try to refresh and see if that comes up for me. Interesting. Uh, for some reason, that's not showing up. Yeah, I'm and I'm sure also why. seeing a not supported. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, the uh, uh, yeah, co uh, yeah, yeah. Collect, yeah, collections. They don't get uh, the numbers, unique viewers, but um, yeah, normally there oh, is a number that shows up here. Yeah, and it was showing up just a few minutes ago. Very strange. Uh, so I'll have to look into that. Yes, but, yes, uh, yeah. So we'll have to uh, look into that. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, are there any other questions for uh, for us today? There was, uh, yeah. So um, you show you mentioned that uh, you can link to uh, Panopto and YouTube. Um, the university also has a license with uh, Vector for some of its training. Can you put uh, those Vector um, LMS videos uh, also into your learning path? So Vector Vector works a little differently. Um, so they do have okay. a lot of embedded videos, right? But um, I don't think you can take, you know, the individual videos out of Vector and put them into, a, um, into something like this. But what you could do is take a link 
to or possibly take a link. That actually might be a question for uh, vector uh, solutions, but there, uh, you might be able to do a URL to the course. I'm not sure if ours get mm -hmm. unique uh, URLs, but that would be an option. So if it couldn't embed the videos itself, it would at least have a link directly to uh, the course itself. But that might be a question for our uh, vector administrators or over uh, either here in OIT or in HR as well, since I know they use it very, very, very intensively. So um, that is a very good question, though, and it could be linked to a point, but uh, I don't think it videos could directly be embedded. Yeah, I think yeah, I'd probably agree on that. The I think there's the there are some open stuff once you get into Vector, some open courses and and titles and stuff. And so if you're wanting to link to directly to those, but I mean Vector is kind of a almost competing platform and where it wants you to true. be using its service to, true, <laughs> to access true. those. So, uh, but yeah, another resource also, yeah, I guess another resource we should probably mention is that uh, there are, um, if you've, we all get the email saying, hey, you need to take this required training. Uh, but in case you didn't know, there are also um, in the vector platform, there are a lot of other videos that are available um, for, um, dealing with um, risk management solutions and stuff like that and how to, um, you know, properly wash your eyes if chemical burns and stuff like that and all that. Um, there's a wide variety of uh, video content there for a um, little different in nature than what we find on LinkedIn. So sure. that's exactly. also up there. Yes, thank you. So All right, much. people, um, we're we're getting kind of close to the end here. But if you again have any more questions, please feel free to pop those into the chat or the Q and A, and we will get those answered. Thank um, you. And uh, one thing I do want to bring up real quick, kind of going back to the uh, that reporting question that we had earlier. If you do want any uh, more advanced reporting for specific courses or something like that, you can always contact. Uh, myself and my team at ittraining at smu.edu, and uh, we'll be more than happy to see if we can pull some more detailed information than the uh, curator role might provide. So um, we, we do have that available if you do need it, so. Awesome, awesome, Zach. And uh, so how long would it take you to, um, so you, you did a, a really nice rundown here of, creating, you know, a quick um, career path. Um, but if somebody wanted to basically start to finish uh, for their employees to create a, a nice little career path or a, a learning path, um, how long would, would you say they would take them to get from start to finish? Um, well, with uh, I'll go back here to this create here. I'll just create a new one from scratch. Um, and once you create this title, And uh, let me go ahead and I'll do this here. Once you get to this part where uh, you can uh, start adding, I mean, this, once you get into the zone <laughs> and uh, link mm -hmm. start your, or if you have all of your links together and if you have an idea of what you want to search for, it can be very, very quick. Uh, of course, this one that I just did was very short as an example, mm -hmm. but uh, what, once you um, create or add any of your content, like for this example, you can then add another section if you'd like. Start searching for Excel. See what else you'd like. So you can really do this pretty quickly. And I would say if, if it was a really, really large one, I would say probably a half hour. Or uh, and yeah. even quicker, quicker if you know exactly the courses and videos that you wanted already. But if you're uh, doing a little uh, window shopping, which I do that myself, um, <laughs> it, it could take a little longer. So uh, it does vary, but with the system the way it is, it makes it very quick and easy. Yeah, I would say yeah that the if you came in knowing what courses you wanted to add to your learning path, um, somebody could. It, Obviously, look, you got this up in, in seconds. Really, you could less than five minutes if you already knew the courses that you wanted to put into your learning path could be have that available to your employees in, in less than 10 minutes as long as you knew what courses you 
had available or you wanted to actually include into your learning path. Yes, and exactly. What a great way to get that going um, and help your employees out. Absolutely. This is what it's all about, right? So uh, again, um, if you do have uh, any questions about that, um, also we do have our representatives from LinkedIn Learning that can do uh, that can actually help you build out uh, content paths for your uh, team if you would like. And so if you if that is something you're interested in, I can get you connected with those folks, and they can then uh, have their uh, content uh, folks help you build out content if that's something you desire. So lots of different options for you. And uh, I think we're probably at uh, time pretty much. So are there any other last minute questions, Ian? I am not seeing anything in the chat, but if uh, anybody has a question, this is the time. Uh... <laughs> Yes. And, and so, um, as yeah, I guess always, that's it. <laughs> okay. Well, as always, if any questions pop up uh, at the uh, later on, uh, feel free to let the IT help desk know. They are available, as always, at help at smu.edu, 214 uh, 768 help, uh, smu.edu slash IT chat, and as always, on stable. So, uh, with that, I will go ahead and wrap this up and give a little bit of your day back to you. And thank you again, everybody, and have a great day. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day.